River Productions and Model Railroad Craft from Magazine. We've got Otto Van Drack with us. And Otto, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having us today. Thank you so much. And before I turn you loose, Otto, and, and, and talk about whatever you want to talk about, because it's all yours, uh, especially as a Gold Class sponsor, which we really appreciate. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to point out that if you go to railroadmodelcrossing.com, uh, guys, you'll, you'll be able to see this great article that they did for us. Uh, the show goes on. Uh, West Springfield go, a show goes viral. And it was nicely done. And, and we really appreciate that, Otto. Thank you so much for doing that. Sure. Glad to. Um, you know, over the years, I think a lot of people don't realize that the Amherst Railway Society uses a lot of the proceeds from the show to fund a lot of important railway preservation projects uh, around the region. And we are really happy to support the show, not just because of that, the show's a great event by itself, but I think people don't realize the, uh, the preservation aspect that's built into this. I know um, our museum up here in Rochester, New York, the Rochester Genesee Valley Railroad Museum has been a recipient of many um, Amherst preservation grants over the years. And we thank you for that. Well, um, gee. I, who's interviewing here? Who here? I, 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 that took me by surprise. Thank you so much for saying that, Otto. I really appreciate that. Well, I think I think it's an important aspect that a lot of people don't realize. Um, you know, they just know it's a very large and popular show, but there's many aspects to it. Uh, and I know we're all missing it, but I think, uh, you know, this is a great event we put on here today. Thanks so much to Virtual Rail Fan for making this happen and keeping everything running smoothly behind the scenes. Um, I brought a few products to show off, I uh, think current things that we're working on at the moment, um, starting off with our February issue of <laughs> uh, Model Railroad News. This uh, should be in most mailboxes uh, already. February issue is a Canadian themed issue. And uh, one of the products they're highlighting is Cato's new um, N-Scale Transcontinental, the Canadian National Transcontinental set. Um, so that's really cool. And a lot of other great Canadian content as well. Switching hats for a moment, I'm also associate editor for Railfin and Railroad Magazine. And we have our February issue, which is titled True North. It's a celebration of Canadian railroading. We cover a lot of uh, great railroading from coast to coast. Ryan Gaynor has an excellent um, photo essay about uh, Northern Ontario. Um, we Talk to AJ Shuin. He's out there in Saskatchewan shooting uh, CN six axles uh, on an industrial branch. Um, we travel out to the Southern Railway of British Columbia. We really cover a lot of different aspects. So you definitely want to check out the February issue of Railfan and Railroad with its uh, Canadian content this month. Brings us up to Railroad Model. I'm never going to get used to this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Railroad uh, Model Craftsman, our uh, February cover this month. We travel to the Ashland District. This is Don Drum's HO Scale Chicago Northwestern layout. Um, beautifully detailed, a lot of great typical uh, Northwoods, Wisconsin scenes on this layout. Uh, beautiful transition arrow layout, mostly uh, hauling pulpwood and iron ore in this area, but also a lot of passenger schedules to uh, to work around. So I think that offers a challenge for the operators. You're trying to move your slow pokey freight train, but here comes here comes the 400, you gotta get out of the way. So that's interesting. Also have an article about remotoring a PFM, an old uh, Pacific fast mail import uh, brass shea. Um, mm. Those shays were often well detailed models, uh, not great runners. We learned how to replace the motor and the drivetrain, make it more reliable. Uh, also have a great story from uh, Brooke Stover about how to have satisfying operating sessions on your smaller layouts. Um, we go to his S scale Buffalo Creek and Gawley layout, and he talks about how he set it up for operations. He has two, um, he can host two operating crews at a time. They have a nice three hour session and it all works out really well for him. And um, we also have a great story from Mr. Matt Snell shows us how to make some unique tank car loads, um, tank head loads, the top of a tank uh, being shipped to a place where you might have a tank farm or oil tanks or any mm -hmm. industrial situation. These tank heads would be shipped on special bracing uh, standing up in a gondola. So if you have some gondolas and you're looking for some interesting loads, not just leaving them empty, 
um, you want to check that out. We also have a few uh, book titles just came out in the last few months want to highlight. Um, we have this excellent new volume just came out. Rio Grande's Narrow Gauge K36 Locomotives by Jerry Day. Um, Jerry's been researching this topic for quite a while and uh, it's an exhaustive history of the entire K36 class that ran on Rio Grande's narrow gauge lines. Um, it's a pretty, pretty thick book. Um, if you're not to narrow gauge, you can use it to study your dining room table. Um, but I think there's, there's more to it than that. A lot of great photography in here. Um, so if you're into the prototype or you're modeling, um, you know, not only is there great color and black and white photography, but there's also an exhaustive history of how these engines were built and rebuilt. Um, also how they ended up on the tourist railroads like Cumbries and Toltec and how they got rebuilt. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's a lot of great information here. There's rosters, there's drawings. Um, it's, here we go, this beautiful fold out <laughs> um, you know, detailed drawings. These are part of the book as well. So there's a lot of great technical information, like I said, for rail fans, for modelers, if you're just into steam locomotive technology, um, don't want to miss that. A couple of other projects I've been involved in. This is a great book just came out this fall. Conrail in Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley. Uh, by Olaf Tarme. He's been researching this book for a number of years. This book covers Conrail operations in the area around Easton and Allentown, PA. Um, a lot of legacy railroads were consolidated into this area. You had the Jersey Central, you had the Erie Lackawanna, you had the Lehigh Hudson River, the Lehigh New England, the Lehigh Valley. Uh, you even had Penn Central and you had the Reading. And they all intertwined here, um, Allentown Yard being a major, major focus of the operations, um, a very busy place. You had Bethlehem Steel in Allentown. That was another major customer. You had numerous branch lines going out into uh, the surrounding towns. Cement traffic was big for this area as well. So this is an all color book. It's 128 pages. It covers everything from an introduction to the legacy operations, how they were consolidated under Conrail. We examine each branch line and the main lines. And then the final chapter is what happened under Norfolk Southern and how there was even further consolidation as well. So this was a great book to work on. I was the editor of this project, um, Conrail in Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley. So again, if you're, if you're a Conrail fan or if you're a fan of Northeastern railroading, uh, branch line railroading. There's a lot of great inspiration here for modelers, a lot of great classic photography, not only from Olive, but from a number of uh, well-known Northeastern photographers. Uh, last project, this just came out towards the end of the year. Paint and detail railroad models with Scott Lupia. Um, this was a great project to work on. I was the editor for this as well. Um, a number of Scott's projects from previous issues of Railroad Model Craftsman, plus a few um, new projects he wrote just for this book. Um, there's projects in HO scale, N scale, um, even HON3, there's steam, there's diesel, there's cabooses, there's freight cars. And it's really all about uh, different projects and kind of walking you through the process of everything from kit bashing to applying parts to a model to painting and weathering techniques. Um, and there's a lot of different projects in here for different skill levels. So there's some that are probably easier to start for a first time modeler. And then there's others that are maybe a little more advanced. This one is all about building a, a particular kit to represent um, an HO scale Lackawanna caboose but they're not just specific to the project. A lot of the techniques and tips that are in this book can be used for a variety of projects. So if you're building a craftsman kit, you can use those techniques. If you're kit bashing in um, styrene, 
you know, there's other techniques as well. There's a whole chapter in here. Scott talks about etching your own brass parts, your own detail parts. Um, he was actually creating the project that's on the cover here, the Seaboard Coastline E6 units. Um, they were Broadway limited models. He wanted to add additional detail. And the way he did that was by etching his own parts. So you can find all of these books on the White River Productions website, which is located at shop.whiteriverproductions.com. Um, you can order any of our books and magazines. You can subscribe to any of our publications. Um, and we're always glad to hear from our readers. Like John said before, you can visit me at rrmodelcraftsman.com. You can see the article we did about how um, John and his crew prepared for this virtual event. And you can also get a teaser of some content that's in our magazines. So I look forward to seeing you all online. And John, thanks for having us today. Wow. I, Otto, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's, what's spare time? Yeah, really. That just is amazing that all, all of that's happening at once. And, and uh, boy, White River has just gone crazy since uh, I've known you guys. And I really appreciate it. I've got a real short story that, that uh, uh, involves uh, you guys. I, we did uh, for uh, one of my friend's uh, layouts, a, a brewery uh, modeled after the um, uh, Coors warehouse with the turn with the uh, sure. transfer tables. And I called and, and I didn't have a copy of the article. I called you guys up. You found the article. You sent it to me. So yeah, I, we're, always, I really, we're, always glad to, we're always glad to help our readers out. So, oh, my God. Yeah. And this was long before uh, I knew you. But uh, I just wanted to convey that story just to let people know that that's how great you guys are. So I really appreciate that. You're welcome. John, do you remember when you and I used to work together on the uh, Northeastern Region newsletter, The Coupler? Oh my gosh. I, you know, yes. Now that you say that, oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Small worlds. Yeah. I told everybody yesterday that there's no such thing as six degrees of separation. It's usually two degrees of separation. So right. it's amazing. <laughs> so it's very cool. Otto, thank you so much for being here. And I, I look forward to seeing you uh, about a year from now. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much, John. Take All care. Right. We really appreciate it. Take care. Have a great one. Thank you again. So guys, next up is the Esteem Railroading Institute uh, with Dean Pyers. And he's done, and I've talked to him on and off a lot. And, and so if you go and if you look in his, uh, uh, in, in our directory, if you go to triple dub Michigan steam train.com forward slash Amherst, you'll be able to see what's happening and what he's doing for us for this weekend. And, and he apologizes for not meeting with us this year, uh, but he has a little video prepared for us um, it, it, on, a, on a YouTube link. Uh, but he, he actually is welcoming us, welcoming, welcoming the attendees this year. And he's got a little discount for people if you shop their store and you could see what they do. Uh, and really guys, this, this is just another, uh, 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 group of people that are just trying to help in the industry. Um, and uh, as we look down through, you can see what they're dedicated to, their location, their hours, who to contact, and all part of this little page they built just for us. So I really want to thank them. Let's go to that video and see what's going on with them. back and boy that was a great presentation by um, Otto von Drack 
uh, it is appreciated. And and I've known those guys for a long time. And 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 you watch what we do together over the next year. There's there's a lot of exciting things going on with that. Um, so just a little reminder, guys, we're getting close to the end, uh, but still we've got some great stuff coming up. So don't go anywhere. Don't touch that dial. And, and, and so really what we're going to do next is just go back and check out, because uh, I want to make sure you, you realize everybody that was in this uh, presentation, the Virtual Railroad Hobby Show, go back to the list of exhibitors, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll see that there are 81 exhibitors here. And, and while we didn't have time to talk to all of them, uh, we really appreciate the fact that all of them are here and in this virtual railroad hobby show. Take a special note of our sponsors, um, everybody from our Keystone sponsor to Scale Trains, our, our Platinum sponsors, all the way down to all of our sponsors, guys. There's been quite a few of them. So we really appreciate that as well. And, and uh, again, we're going to record all of this. We're going to segment this. We're actually going to let you know who is in each segment. So you'll be able to play and, and play back the ones that you want. And if you want to see your own uh, 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 business on, you'll be able to see that with ease. So keep that in mind uh, as, we do, as we do that. So we're going to go one more time uh, to a, uh, a rail cam of, uh, of uh, Virtual Rail Fans Choice. Uh, so guys, let's uh, let's go to some rail cam um, uh, of your choosing. Take it away.
Hey everybody, we're back and we've got 30, I've got 4.30. Uh, just a little reminder to all the exhibitors that are still out there, you can't pack up yet. You can't pack up until five o'clock. Oh wait, that's if it's, a, uh, I'm so confused, it's late in the day. Anyways, uh, let's, we're laughing in the background. <laughs> let's head over to Valley End Track Model Railroad Club of Connecticut guys. They also do uh, a lot of stuff to help us during the show. Uh, and, and so let's go over to, uh, um, uh, if you look in the directory, you can see their website, but it's actually ctvntrack.com. And it tells you a little bit about who they are. Uh, it was established way back in 76 and started in a guy's basement. But as you look at the at, at, at what's going on with them, uh, you can see a lot of cool things. And, and they do a lot of nice work. They have club news, they have show schedules, photo gallery, uh, and they've got awards that they hand out. So check those all out. They've got a, their own YouTube channel. They were actually award-winning. Uh, they had a, an award-winning module. You know, a lot of people don't realize that we give away um, three different awards during the show. Uh, the best module in the show, of which uh, one of the uh, N-Track guys, uh, the, the, the Valley N-Track uh, uh, guys won. We also give away the best layout in the show. And uh, you can't win two years in a row. You can't win uh, for three years, actually. Um, and uh, then there's the dreaded least amount of scenery on a module award. And, and what we do there is we actually um, award uh, someone for having not enough scenery. And if you, if you, uh, uh, God help you, if you, uh, if you win that two years in a row, cause you're in serious trouble with us, but uh, it's all in jest. So it's, it, it, and I think I shouldn't be saying this out loud, but uh, I think everybody knows it by now anyways, but it, it's hysterical um, when uh, someone wins it and they see us coming over with the award because we call everybody together from that layout to make the presentation. And sometimes it happens to be the least amount of scenery. And it's, it, it's actually a good, a good, a good uh, laugh uh, and, and all in fun. So uh, do me a favor, check out uh, uh, the Valley End Track Modular uh, Railroad from Connecticut. John Bingle is their, is their uh, uh, head guy for right now, guys. And uh, they do a great job, and, and we are very happy that they um, come to our show. Uh, now, next, we're going to go to our uh, final uh, rail cam. Uh, so we're going to head over there until a quarter of the hour, and we still have two more vendors, guys. So hang tight because we're saving a good one for last. Uh, so hang in there and let's go see what we have to do uh, or where we're headed this time on uh, virtual rail fans rail cam hit it guys.
Hey, everybody, we're back. And let's go take a look at uh, Conway Scenic Railroad. You can actually reach them at www.conwayscenic.com. And we've got a nice pre-recorded video from Brian Solomon that's been uploaded for us. Uh, guys, it'll tell us all about Conway Scenic. Uh, and they've been around for years. I've been up there a few times myself. Uh, and they do a great job with all these trips and all kinds of stuff that's going on there. Let's roll that video.
28 for the conductor if you want to reverse back in that position and then jump on the side. Roger that. Back to the 216. I'm riding on the foot slender. Hey everybody, we're back. And let me uh, let me just say one thing here. I, I what I really love about this hobby is the new and innovative innovative products. And and I I, I actually saved a a, a a person, a company, an exhibitor uh, uh, for this slot uh, just because we're right towards the end here. And I just wanted to. Uh, show you guys what's new and what's out there. I, people just keep blowing me away and I love it. So I'm going to look at uh, Greg McComas's site and it's called mcrailproducts.com guys. So if you go to Mac, M -A -C, railproducts.com and, and take a look at what he's doing. First of all, he's given a 10% discount coupon called Amherst valid through uh, the, the uh, first, so valid through tomorrow as well. And, and which uh, I appreciate. And, and if you look at what he does, his finished products, he, he actually does end of train markers that are removable and meant to fit inside KD couplers. You know, it's like, what? And, and it's like, holy cow. And you could, and, and there's all different styles, uh, different colors, but all made to fit in, inside. Uh, end of train storage racks, you could have their lard, their aluminum, their weathered, the this, the that. So you could actually take them and place them at the end of your train as a train leaves if you're in op sessions. This is like, holy cow to me. I, the ideas that you guys think up is just amazing to me. So take a look at all of those. And then as you scroll down towards the end of the, uh, the, the products that are out there, you could view all products. Uh, and then it'll take you to a lot of the uh, additional products. And he's got close-ups of uh, various things, guys, like uh, end of uh, 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 end of train markers, antenna, all kinds of additional things. So he's got yellow couplers, orange couplers, just all different kinds, and 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 uh, uh, these four packs of antennas and the, and these racks. And there's if you look down far enough, there's pages of things. There's solar panels that you can mount on top of hopper cars and, and just all kinds of really cool things. Ballast car doors in a four pack. So you've got all kinds of things. But when you check it at, at some of these places like 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 Max site here where they actually specialize in just a couple of things. It's amazing to me the things that you can see. GPS domes that come in a two pack, solar panels for side mount, top mount, different color end of train markers. I'm going to the third page now and I'm just looking. There's all just all different kinds of endless stuff. So I, I really love the fact that we ended on, on a page with someone that's new to us but that blows me away with this product. You could talk and look up the top. It's got stuff about installation. He's got a catalog, O scale products, HO scale products. And you could see all the stuff that's going on. So he's got all kinds of accessories, et cetera. So uh, it's just amazing to me. So Greg, nicely done. Um, and and uh, I just love finding out about these new things. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a great thing. So guys, um, it, it's time to wrap this up and boy, what a, what a long two days it's been, but an incredibly enjoyable two days. I was chatting offline with the folks at Virtual Rail Fan. I said, I almost feel as tired as this, this, this is a real show. And this is how I need to feel to make myself feel better towards the end. So I really, I really appreciate that. So let me give a, a, a shout out. Thanks to all 81 of our exhibitors that have uh, 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 participated, guys, especially our sponsors. We really appreciate this this year. It's really helping us out. Special shout out to Shane and Holly uh, at scaletrains.com, our keystone sponsor. I really appreciate that. And let's bring in the, the folks behind the curtain, guys, the crew uh, at uh, railfan.com. Mike, just come on in and let's uh, say hi. Let's get you guys on the air. John, hi. let me just tell you, it has been a heck of a weekend. And uh, I don't think I've ever been so glad to see five o'clock on a Sunday in, in a long time. Um, <laughs> It's been a pleasure to work with you guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure to, to produce the show. And uh, just a huge shout out to our folks here in studio um, and the entire Virtual Rail Fan team, our moderators, 
um, you know, Kathy in the studio, everybody that's just been involved here has been, uh, they, they just, they crushed it. I couldn't oh, ask for a better team to work brilliant. with. I, I could not have done this without help from you guys. It, it's just been a pleasure to work with you guys. You're actually nice guys too. Yeah, John, that's something we don't usually hear. Um, you got to make <laughs> us a promise though. We're going to ask for one thing is that the show has to be in person next year. <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah, as much fun as we had here in the studio, I, I don't think anything beats quite being there in Springfield. You know, so. the, the only difference is my feet aren't killing me from walking about 40 miles on cement. Other than that, I feel exactly yeah. the same, less the, the foot problem. <laughs> yeah, it really has been a pleasure. So thank you, guys. Thanks thanks to our viewers. Just uh, thanks to everybody. It was, a, it was a great show. I couldn't have done it without you guys. Well, listen, likewise, and, and, and I agree. Thanks to all the viewers as well, uh, especially uh, uh, my crew. Uh, Greg Moss, you're out there, I know. Uh, Mike Chapman, Chappie, you're out there. Uh, uh, Gary Donnell and Kurt uh, Jelinek, who have been in the back uh, supporting me the whole time. Uh, Joe Biagioni, our president, and the rest of the board of the Amherst Railway Society. Guys, thank you all very much. And don't forget, this has been recorded. We're going to segment it. We're going to get it out to you ASAP. Next year's show in person, in person, Mike, is the 29th and 30th of January. Guys, it's always the week before the Super Bowl. So we've got the AFC, NFC championship games, and then our weekend, and then the Super Bowl. So stay tuned, and uh, we will be back in person bigger and better than ever. That's a promise. So this is John Sacerdote, guys, signing off. Stay safe, get vaccinated, take care. We'll see you guys.